What is up guys, it's Cal, and I'm going to show you guys the fastest way possible to get the Rogue, Legendary, and well, the Twin Daggers. Now this quest chain is for level 85 Rogues, and you want to start off by entering Dragon Soul in 25 man. It doesn't have to be normal or heroic, it just should be 25 man, and I'll explain later why it should be 25 man. Now once you've entered the raid and accepted your quest from Lord Afro, what I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name honestly, you're going to make your way to Hagara which does require you to kill the three bosses before her, but once you make your way to her, you're just gonna pickpocket her, which that part can be soloed. Make sure you don't kill Hagara though, because you do need her for a quest later on. Now, once you've pickpocketed the Decipher Ring from Hagara, you're gonna head to Stormwind or Orgrimmar, depending on your faction, and you're going to go to the Ethereals, where the Void Storch is, the Transmog Vendor, all that, and you're going to turn your Decipher Ring into one of the Ethereals, for 10k gold. Uh, I forgot to say that at the beginning, I will add it in editing though, but you do need 10,000 gold to spare. And he's pretty much just going to hold the ring hostage for 12 hours. So you just have to wait 12 hours. So after the 12 hour period, once you receive your ring, you're going to go to a location that's in the northwest part of Twilight Highlands. You're going to go into this little tree thing, this burrow, and then you're going to talk to an NPC who is going to give you a cipher, which will allow you to decipher the ring. After that, you're going to just walk right outside the tree, and then you're going to talk to an NPC who's going to fly you to the Ravenhold Manor, right outside of it, and you're going to have to stealth your way into it. Now the next part of the chain is to catch a thief. Once you arrive at the location of Ravenhold Manor, you'll accept this quest and it tells you to stealth into the manor without getting caught. So you're going to put up stealth as you see now and there is a big red circle around you, meaning if any NPC enters this circle, uh, you get caught. It will teleport you back to the beginning. So you're going to want to stealth your way around hugging the side of this mountain and I use distract here for some reason it's not needed but you do want to sap this NPC and you're going to want to use like pretty much all the rogue tricks you know it's very useful for, for these stealth missions sap is super useful distract is useful uh, in some cases shadow step is also useful in some cases I don't use it in this stealth mission but yeah you want to stealth that guy walk up this mountain uh, but yeah I use shadow step later on in other um, stealth missions but you want to come up here, sap that guy, and I do this cool maneuver right here where I edge myself so the current sap target isn't in my circle. I then sap this new sap target. I then will select this target up here, putting my sprint up, jumping, sapping that person while I'm in midair so they don't catch me. But you're going to make your way to the back of Ravenhold Manor. You're going to click on this rope, which will bring you to the roof and then once you're on the roof uh, you're going to there's a window or I think a box I think I yeah I, oh yeah you want to make sure you put yourself back on actually up here you don't have to put yourself back on because no NPCs no NPCs will find you but there's a box that will put you into the manor and then you want to make sure you put stealth on here because there's a lot of NPCs in here that will find you but this is at the very top of the area. You're going to want to walk yourself down the spiral stairs like so. And then you want to make your way to the basement of this place, which is right there. And I'm selecting the set because I'm thinking I might need to sap him. Though I don't really need to because he pats away. You're going to want to just jump down there to the spacement and then a cutscene occurs. That's right, mortal. 
The prize you seek no longer sleeps within a shell. Here I am, in the flesh. I'm not some trophy for a red dragon's mantelpiece, and I'm never going back. Don't look so surprised. We dragons are conscious, even within our shells. As I grew, I could hear the plotting and scheming. I used to be born a prisoner. But I'm one of a kind. A black dragon, raised free from the taint of my father's corruption. And that's how I intend to stay. Free. Somehow, you managed to elude all of my guards. You slipped in here like a ghost. That makes you valuable to me. Let's talk. Your Highness, we caught this beast snooping around the caves just outside the compound. I'm not afraid of you. Wait, who, who are you? You don't recognize your former prisoner? Shall we execute him, my prince? No. I want him to deliver a message to the Red Dragonflight. Tell them that I am free of my father's madness, and I will be free of them as well. I am to be left alone. This will be my first and only warning. Deathwing's minions may have you killed. Deathwing's minions should be afraid of me. Get him out of here. And Farad? Yes, sir. Break his legs. Now then, my new friend, we have much to talk about. As you know, black dragons frequently disguise themselves as humanoids in order to tamper with mortal affairs. While the house of my mad father collapses around him, the few remaining black dragons Exotic have gone into hiding. But I can still sense them. My cowardly brothers and sisters will cause untold suffering if we allow them to stay in the shadows. Moreover, they are a threat. I need to get closer. Me. That is where you come in. Help us to slay them all, and I will reward you handsomely. Your first target I do not share is here, my in the ruins madness. of Gilneas. I've lost some of my best if men already. Through, let's see if I you... Sure. Now, after you've infiltrated Ravenhold Manor, the next step is to infiltrate Gilneas. So you're going to want to fly your way to Gilneas and accept the quest, Our Man in Gilneas. Now, before we get started on the stealth mission, I want to first say that if you have a friend that's also doing this quest and they're at this part, it actually makes it much easier because there's a boss at the end. You're in a phased area of Gilneas, and you're only phased to anyone else who is also doing the quest. So if, if you have someone, if you have a friend that's also doing the quest, then you and your friend can fight the boss together, which makes it very easy, which I ended up doing because my rogue was sub, and sub is not good against this boss at all because you have to be behind your target to do a lot of damage. So with that being said, let's get started with the stealth mission. So you're going to want to put up stealth. It's pretty much the same thing as before. I'm going to put a map at the bottom left that shows the route that I took um, through Gilneas. But you're going to want to sap this guy, keep walking. Um, and sap this person. I actually go pretty fast through this just because this is probably my like a hundredth time doing it. I failed many times before this, but I was finally successful. Uh, you're gonna want to walk your way through there, make sure the pat doesn't catch you. Uh, then you're gonna you're gonna want to sap this guy up here, walk through him, 
uh, set this guy over here. And I should also add, I should also add at this point that you do want to have shadow step for this. I do use shadow step a little later on. Um, so I end up sh I uh, I end up sapping this guy that's attacking the target dummy. Uh, wait for the path to go. Walk through here, and then I walk past this path. Make sure that path doesn't catch you. And then this NPC right here, you actually want to sap as close to that far building as possible. So I'm just waiting a bit until she gets close to the building. I then walk up and sap her because this NPC you want to be able to sap. And once you sap this NPC, the other NPC sap is going to wear off. So I end up sapping this person uh, right about now. And then it gets a little dicey around here because there's a lot of paths around here. See, those guys stopped and they saw me, but I didn't aggro them, so I kind of shimmy through them. I wait here for a second. I think I sap this person and then walk past them. Uh, yeah, I thought that pal was going to walk right into me, but they end up turning around and walking away. I sap this person, walk past them. Uh, I wait for this pat to turn around and go the other way. And then, once they're padding the other way, I then jump into the water at the bottom. And then just hug the water, keep walking up this side. I sap this NBC, walk through, or I wait for the path to walk away, I think. And then I walk through, and then I, I think I sap the path. Yeah, I sap the path. And then this is where I use Shadow Step. I walk as close to these NPCs as possible without aggroing them. And then uh, one, of th this guy, I sap and then, or I shadow step and then immediately sap. Like that. And then sap this guy, walk up here. It gets a little uh, dicey up here too. I think I sap this guy to my right. Um, just so he stopped moving, but I end up sapping this NPC right here, and this is pretty much the end. Uh, luckily that guy stopped, because he was getting a bit suspicious, and he almost walked right into me. I then actually shadow sub that guy and sap, and I realize that I have aggro on him, so I'm kind of just standing here wondering what to do, and then I realize, well, uh, I think I'm just going to vanish to drop the aggro. And that is the stealth part in Gilmaeus. So now we're facing Lord Hiram Creed. Now let me remind you that I am doing this with a friend, which made it much easier. You can do that too if you have the option. But getting started into the fight is that you probably want to use Deadly Poison and Crippling Poison if you're soloing him. I'm not, which is why I'm using Leeching Poison. But yeah, those two you want to use. The reason you want to use Crippling Poison is throughout the fight, you might need to kite him. It is a useful tactic because you want to keep Recuperate up the entire fight so you're just constantly healing also don't forget about all the different rogue tricks you have because you're probably going to need to utilize them all blind is a very good move to use on him if you do need to kite him just so he stays in place for a while because he can be stunned he can be blinded he can be gouged all those sorts of things now on to the abilities that he has he has an ability called consuming darkness which is probably the first one you're going to see it's a big AoE circle that does about 9k a tick if you stand in it. If you see him casting it, just run away from him. It can sort of be interrupted if you gouge him or blind him, but you really don't need to worry about doing that. The next move he has is called Black Howl's Will. Now this move does need to be interrupted every chance you get. It's about a 1.5 second cast time, and it does a good bit of damage to you, plus it also drains all of your energy. Now, when he gets to about 75% health, he will shapeshift into another form, which increases his damage against you. And when he was in this form, which is kind of when I started kiting him a lot, but it's not 100% necessary. But the last move he does have is Shadow Breath, which can be interrupted with Gouge or can be stunned. Uh, cannot be interrupted with Kick, but if you see him casting it, you're just going to want to move out of the way. It's a frontal AoE count. 
Also, when he uses the Shadow Breath, he does stay in place, which is a really good time for you to get behind him and build up com combo points to keep up recuperate or for any of your finishing moves. Now, I should also add uh, to not use Vanish if you're doing this by yourself, because it does actually reset him. Now, after you kill him, you're going to teleport back to the beginning, where you're going to turn your quest in, and then you're going to fly your way back to Dragon Soul. Now, just a reminder, everything we've done so far can be completed in the first week period. So that's during the first raid lockout. Now that you're back at Dragon Soul, you're going to start your first grind of the quest, which all legendaries have. You're going to start back where you left off, which is with Hagara, if you've done everything up until this point in the first week. Now, the bosses in Dragon Soul drop gym clusters, and you want to make sure you're on 25 man, because the bosses will most likely drop two clusters per boss. On 10 man, they most likely drop one. Now for 25 man, they'll uncommonly drop one cluster, I mean during my runs, usually one or two of the bosses gave me one cluster, and also in 25 man they will very rarely drop three, like I've actually only seen it happen once, so don't count on it. But once you acquire the clusters, you can go ahead and break them down into shadowy gems. Each cluster yields about 4 to 10 gems, and you have to get 333 gems. Something to note, however, is if you get any excess clusters, do not break them into gems. You'll need the clusters later on in the chain. So if you notice you get like 333 gems by the middle of your last run, you can go ahead and kill the rest of the bosses. But make sure, and I can't stress this enough, don't break the clusters into gems. Now this part of the quest took me about 4 weeks to do. Now once you acquire the gems, you're going to fly your way to Ravenhold Manor. Then you're going to turn your quest into Rathion, and then you're going to head to Deadwind Pass. Deadwind Pass near Karazhan is your next stealth mission. It's similar to the last one, though I do believe that this one is actually easier. There's also a boss at the end that you have to kill, and similar to the last one, if you have a friend doing this quest, you can help kill the boss at the end. Now, I didn't have to do that because I thought this boss was easier than the last one, but getting started into the stealth mission, you're going to want to go ahead and stealth up and sap this guy. Walk around here behind this house. Um, kind of nudging your way, just holding the side, staying near the side all the way past the front of Karazhan. Around this house. And you're going to come up to a cellar which is on the other side of this house, I believe. You're gonna need to sap a guy also. And then one thing I learned here is that if the enemies stand in your red circle, they don't necessarily aggro onto you. It's just if they're looking at you, so I actually distract these guys to look away. And then I jump into this cellar. And just going down this corridor, there is a path, I believe, that starts walking up, yeah. So you wanna make sure you don't run into him. I think I back up a little, yeah, and then I sap him, and then I run through, making sure the path that doesn't go the other way catches me, and then you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go into this middle part of the cellar, where I sap that guy because he almost walked right into me, and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and go to the right. And then just keep uh, nudging your way through these guys, sap that guy, walk past him, and then you're going to, you're pretty much at the end, but there are these pylons that you want to use to your advantage, uh, which you see me use right here. When you click on them, they don't activate your stealth, or they don't deactivate your stealth. You want to make sure you click that when some of those elementals that pat around are near it, because it actually kills everything around them. I get caught here, but I do use Vanish. Uh, 90% of the time when you use Vanish, you actually fail and it teleports you back to the beginning, but that time it didn't. But I wait for these guys, Elementals, to pat back the other way. And then when they're near the next pylon, I believe I click that pylon to kill all of them. Yeah, I distract them so then they just stop moving and just get as close to it as possible without aggroing anything. And then everything dies around it and then I believe that's the last pylon I clicked there's a third one but I don't really need to click it 
and then I'll wait for those elementals to pet back the other way. I will then distract them. Uh, next time they come around, I did. Uh, I think my distract was on cooldown. But next time they come around, I distract them so they stop moving. And then I sprint my way and run to where the boss is. Now the next boss now is similar to the last one, you want to make sure you recuperate up the entire time. The poisons I'm using are crippling and a leeching poison for the extra heals. Now the thing that's a bit annoying about this boss is if you die multiple times, hopefully you've got like a Jeeves or a scrap bot so you can repair, because you won't be able to mount indoors if you have a yak or a mammoth. The last boss was outdoors, which allowed you to mount. Now onto the fight. Nalus has an ability called Arcane Infused Weapon. When you see her cast, you want to make sure you kidney shot it. If you aren't able to kidney shot it, you want to make sure you run away from her because it does a good bit of damage. Now throughout the fight, she will also enrage. As soon as she enrages, you want to make sure you use Shiv on her to dispel her because she does a lot of extra damage while she's enraged. And then a third ability that she does is Arcane Missiles. This does a good bit of damage and it's interruptible, so you want to make sure you kick it off or gouge her or anything that will interrupt the spell. Now when she gets to about 66 and also 33% health, she will go into another phase, meaning she will be invulnerable, you can't attack her. And then there are two pylons on the other side of the room, and there are multiple explosions that happen on the ground throughout the room. You want to run to each pylon on the other side of the room without getting hit by any of the explosions because they do a lot of damage. You want to make sure you click both of the pylons and then she becomes attackable again. And then after that 33% mark, she gains a new ability called Blazing Shadows, which she'll cast on you and you can do one of two things. You can either Cloak of Shadows it off or you can keep running until the debuff falls off you. The debuff lasts about 8 seconds and what it does is it puts a trail of fire behind you so you can continuously run and then using faint is a good idea so then it decreases the damage that Blazing Shadows does. And that's about it. Once you've mastered all that, you'll then have Nalus killed. Our mage buddy will then teleport us out of the instance and we finish up our quest there. After that, you'll go back to Ravenhold Manor, you'll turn your quest into Rathion, and then you want to head back to Dragon Soul. Now that you're back at Dragon Soul, this is where you do your second grind of the quest, and it's also the last one. You need to collect 60 gem clusters. Now, using the same rules as before, you want to make sure it's on 25 man, bosses drop around 2. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's normally heroic, I don't believe the drop rates are different at all. Now, collecting the 60 clusters, took me four weeks to do. I got on average around 15 from each run. Also one other thing to note is that during your last run of you collecting the clusters, if you do not have Deathwing killed in that run, don't kill him yet because you actually need to kill him for the very last quest. So let's say you get your last cluster on Ultraxion. Uh, don't finish out the raid. Well, you can kill the bosses up to Deathwing, but then don't kill Deathwing. If for some unfortunate reason you get your last cluster on Deathwing, like I did, that actually happened to me, you do have to wait till your next raid lockout to kill Deathwing. And then once you collect the clusters, you head back to Ravenhold Manor to Rathion. Rathion's then going to give you a quest where you have to get a fragment of Deathwing's jaw that just requires you going back to Dragon Soul and killing Deathwing, and then just looting his body. And now you are done with the chain. You're going to go back to Ravenhold Manor, see that it's actually burned down, and then you're going to talk to Rathion who is right outside and it's going to trigger a cutscene. Champion, you have your reward, but there is one final dragon we need to slay. 
My prince, we should leave this place, in case they come back to finish the job. Farad, I was just talking about you. The final Black Dragon. The one who's been more hidden than any of them. Your Highness, I have never tried to conceal what I am from you. Yes, you rescued me while I was still within my egg, and I owe you my life. But you are a black dragon, and you share the corruption of all my brothers and sisters. That is not true. Do you deny it? The dark visions? The voices in your head? No, no. I am in control of the voices. They're here to help me. And what are they telling you now, Farad? What do your dark masters whisper? Kill. They want me to kill you now. Oh, why did you have to go and anger them? You have proven. Too difficult to control! I will never be controlled! The Red Dragon Fight has no idea what they unleashed when they experimented on my egg. Hero, strike now! Use your newfound power to finish him! It is done, friend. To my knowledge, I am the only black dragon who remains. A new age for mortals has dawned, and heroes like you are among the vanguard. I must go now. Disappear. Perhaps we will meet again. I hope we find ourselves on the same side. And that is the entire chain on how to get the rogue daggers. Now, a cool effect that they have is that they actually allow you to slow fall for 15 seconds. So that's pretty neat. But that's the video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. You can leave a like on this video if it helped. Uh, you can check out my other tutorials where I show how to get Shadowmorn and the Terragosa staff. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And... I'll see you guys in the next video.